October the 11th, 2014, and as you can see, my little sidekick has conked out on me. She is tired. She's saying, I don't want any part of anything right now. I want to just rest. That's what she's saying. You could at least say hi to her. Come on now. Say hi. Okay, now you can calm back down. All right. <laughs> Good. All right, well, um, today was a beautiful day in Weatherby, Missouri. We did have to go up to Nebraska today. Nebraska City, Nebraska, which is really a nice little town of less than uh, 10,000 people. Small town. But God protected us because on the way home, there was a fella who was hauling um, some of this um, steel roofing and it started flying off his trailer right two or three cars ahead of us. And it could have been really, really bad. But God showed us mercy. That's all I can say. And He showed everyone else mercy around there that could have gotten hurt or, or whatever because of it. So we were pleased that God showed favor to us in protecting us. Tonight I want to talk about a subject that I have covered many, 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 many times over the last seven years on six, seven years on Sermon Audio. And if you want to look at some of those sermons, you can go to Sermon Audio. The easiest way to find this is Google Larry Phillips Sermon Audio and the link will pop up. And there's a search bar on the home page. And any subject that you're interested in looking at, uh, you can put in there, for example, if you want to see a sermon on the resurrection, just type in the word resurrection. If you want to hear a sermon on election, type in election. If you want to hear a sermon on total depravity or, or limited atonement, irresistible grace, final perseverance of the saints, heaven, hell, sin, um, eternal security, everlasting life, um, you know, eschatology, whatever you're, you can do that. But tonight, I want to talk about something that um, is very serious. It's very serious and it's also very um, um, it should cause if you are if you are a believer in Jesus Christ if you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ if you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins then it should make you this sermon should be a sermon that would make you very very joyful very happy However, if you don't believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you don't believe that Jesus Christ uh, is the Son of God, and you don't believe that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, and you don't believe that when you die, your soul returns back to God who gave it to you in the first place, then <laughs> you probably are not going to be very happy with this message. There's only uh, a few people uh, that I have ever met on the face of the earth that have given me a very clear confession of their faith. It's true. I have talked to a lot of people in my 60 years of living and of all the people that I've met in all the different vocations and I've done a lot of different things in my life. 
I've met a lot of different kinds of people in my lifetime. And I can tell you, uh, there have been very few people that have given me a clear testimony of what they believe. People can tell me all the time what they don't believe. Okay, I don't believe in Santa Claus. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in life after death. I don't believe in um, heaven. I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in um, purgatory. I don't believe in the Catholic Church. I don't believe in you know, they can tell you what they don't believe. But when you ask somebody to tell you, can you give me a concise summary of what you believe um, as far as your philosophy of life and your, you know, if you have any particular religion or whatever, can you tell me in a, in a nutshell what you believe? Many people cannot tell you. I ask a person here in the neighborhood what he believed, and he couldn't tell me. And then he saw me a couple weeks later, and he said, "Oh, I want. I, I figured out what it is I believe." I go, "What is it?" He goes, "I'm a Gnostic. <laughs> I'm a Gnostic." Well. <clears throat> there are also people that have told me, well, I'm an agnostic. Now, I've also had people tell me they were, they were uh, uh, indifferent to religion, one way or the other. They didn't care. I've had people tell me that they were, they would identify what they believed by what church they attended. I've had people tell me I'm a I'd say, what do you believe? Well, I'm a United Methodist, or I'm a Presbyterian, or I'm a Southern Baptist, or I'm a um, Community of Christ, or I'm a Mormon, or I'm a Jehovah's Witness, or I'm a um, Unitarian, or I'm a Church of God Holiness, or I'm a Nazarene, or I'm an Assembly of God, or I'm United Pentecostal. You know. That's that's what they how they answer the question what they believe. Some people will tell you, well, you know what I believe, assuming that you know what they believe, but you really don't know what they believe. Other people will tell you, it doesn't really matter what you believe, as long as you're a good person. As long as you're a good moral person, it doesn't matter what you believe. You can believe in the Easter Bunny as long as you're, you know, you're a good person. It doesn't matter what you believe. I've had people tell me, you know, I'm just as good as anybody else. You know, I've got just as good a chance to, you know, on the other side as anybody because I, the way I look at it, they'll say the way I look at it, I'm just as good as anybody else on this planet. <laughs> Well, tonight I'm going to give you a confession of what it is that I believe. You say, well, what difference does that make? Why do I care what you believe? Well, if you're not interested in what I believe, you can just shut me off. Um, you know click the little off and then you don't have to listen to me. But the reason that I am sharing what I believe is because I'm commanded in Scripture to do so. Scripture tells me to be ready to give an answer to everyone of the faith that lies within me. And also it says that if I will confess Christ before men, he will confess me before the Father which is in heaven. So there we go. Now, last night I listened to a debate between a Roman Catholic 
apologetic person and a uh, former Roman Catholic that was turned Protestant. And what was so interesting is that the Protestant, uh, the, the Catholic was a former evangelical and the Protestant was a former Catholic. But the problem is with a lot of these people that give apologetics about a certain subject, they are so academic and they use, you know, two million dollar words and they make it so difficult for the average person that they cannot uh, <laughs> marks over their snoring on the couch. I wonder what it was. They cannot understand what people are talking about. So tonight I'm going to do my best to make this a very concise, hopefully within 15 minutes, uh, you will have a, a pretty clear understanding of what it is that I believe. Now, the first question most people would ask is, where did you get those beliefs? Did you get them from your parents? Were they handed down from generation to generation? Uh, did you get them from some book? Did you get them from the Bible? Did you get them from um, where you go to church? Where did you get your beliefs? Well, first of all, I have to start by saying this. I believe um, that I got my beliefs from divine revelation. And a lot of people are going to say, oh no, here we go. Got another Joseph Smith. He's got some golden tablets. You know, God spoke to him out of the lightning struck and Larry's oh here we go no that's not what I'm talking about I believe that divine revelation is brought to us through the Holy Spirit um, revealing the Word of God to us now we have the written Word of God and God best interpreter is the Holy Spirit. Now, the reason I started with my belief structure around this is because a lot of people don't make a clear demarcation between the... Uh, hold on just a second, I'm getting some interruptions here. Um, okay. <laughs> They don't make a clear demarcation between the wisdom and the beliefs of the world and the revealed knowledge to a person by the Holy Spirit. And so I'm making that clear demarcation tonight. Uh, I'm making a clear distinction between the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. Scripture tells us that the wisdom of man is foolishness. The Bible says the Jews seek after signs and the Greeks seek after wisdom. So the wisdom of this world is foolishness. And we can see that evidenced by the fact that uh, people who are promoting the Big Bang Theory or the spontaneous generation or the carbon dating or the uh, denial that the earth was created in six literal days uh, even though Bible, the Bible tells us emphatically that the world was created in six days and the morning and the evening was the first day and the morning and the evening were the second day and so on and in Exodus it says that God created the world in six days Six days created he them. Yeah. So, uh, so that's where I would start with my belief structure. Is according to the Bible, um, the Holy Spirit conveys to us that 
God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And also, God breathed into the breath of man, and man became a living soul. So God's the one that created man. God is the one that created woman. According to the Bible, that is my belief. A lot of people say, now, do you also believe the story about the apple? You know, and I don't know if it was an apple. But according to Scripture, um, Adam and Eve were commanded not to eat of the tree, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the consequence, according to the Bible, says that the day they eat of it, would eat of it, they would surely die. And that's what happened. They, the day they ate of the tree of the knowledge of the fruit, tree of knowledge of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they died spiritually. And they eventually died physically. Now, when they died spiritually, they were in need of a Redeemer. They needed to be reconciled to God, for they were dead in their trespasses and sin. And it was a short time later that God did have mercy on them and reconciled them through creating, clothe them with animal skins. Blood was shed, symbolic of the blood that would be shed for them on the cross by Jesus Christ. That's what I believe, that's what Scripture teaches. And throughout the Old Testament, many, many, animal sacrifices were made for the sins of the people pointing to the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ who would come and give himself a ransom and he would come to save all of his people from their sins not all of his creation from their sins not every man girl woman and boy without exception from their sins but he said he would come to save his people from their sins. Well, so now we've talked about creation. We've talked about the fall. We've talked about redemption. Now we also have to talk about substitutionary atonement. Jesus Christ was the substitute for the sins of his people when he died upon the cross. He manifested himself in time when he was born in Bethlehem of Judea to a virgin. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She was conceived by the Holy Spirit and gave birth to Jesus. That's called the Incarnation of Christ. And that's a miraculous miracle that, uh, that happened there. But Scripture tells us that Christ was slain from the foundation of the world. And that brings up another issue, and that is the issue of God's sovereignty over all things, including the fact that that God created elect and non-elect angels. We see an account of the fact that there are elect and non-elect angels in the Bible. One example of an elect angel is Gabriel. Another is Michael, the archangel. And one example of a non-elect angel, of course, is Lucifer, who fell and scripture tells us he brought one third of the angels with him when he was cast down to the earth. 
and it was Lucifer who beguiled or deceived or whatever <laughs> word you want to use Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden when he started changing the word of God because God had told him not to eat of it and what would happen and he denied it and said it wouldn't happen and they their eyes would be open and they would be as God but we have to look at scripture and study it to find out that God is sovereign over evil God could have created Lucifer such that he would have never fallen God could have created Michael and Gabriel such so that they would have fallen now there are many things that are beyond our finite mind's understanding for God is holy and just and perfect in all that he does even though we don't understand it. The point is that everything that God does he does it and has a specific purpose for doing it including what we just mentioned creating vessels of wrath fitted for destruction and creating vessels of honor for glory we have an example listed of Pharaoh he said that I will you know he used Pharaoh as an example of a person who uh, he hardened his heart and he he raised up Pharaoh to bring him down so that his name might be declared Jesus' name might be declared throughout the whole earth so he has mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will he hardened that's according to scripture now we also have to talk about the decrees of God the decrees of God God created the world out of nothing because the Bible says the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and he says that he spoke the world into existence God said let there be light and there was light and so God's word is powerful and his word is always always effective for what he wants it to accomplish God has never failed at anything God is a 100 percent success at everything he sets out to do and that includes saving his people from their sins so Jesus Christ was born of a virgin and we see the reality of the fact that it was predicted in Isaiah what would happen to Jesus it says that he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities and by his stripes we are healed all we like sheep have gone astray we've turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all and so we find another example of the substitutionary atonement of Jesus Christ but it didn't stop there it didn't stop with Jesus Christ being hung upon a cross it had been predicted before by Jesus himself he says if you destroy this temple I'll raise it in three days Pharisees the scribes the rulers of that time believed that he was speaking of the temple in Jerusalem and they mocked him 
but he was speaking of his physical temple, his physical body. And that's exactly what happened. He was placed in a tomb, and in three days he rose from the dead. And um, that, was a, that was a miraculous event. He appeared to over 500 people at one time. He also showed himself to all the disciples, except Judas who had hung himself. And he also um, was out away from Jerusalem, and all of a sudden he started raising up from the earth. And he said he was going to come back in the same manner as he left. And he ascended into heaven. Well, this is called for the Christian the blessed hope. That he will come again. He had told his, his disciples. And they had course written this down and it's applicable for all Christians when Christ said if I go away I will prepare a place for you and I will come again and I will receive you unto myself where I am there you may be also in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you And so that's the blessed hope for those for whom Christ has died. But if he had not risen again, Paul said that we as Christians would have been of all men most miserable. For we would yet be in our sins. We would have no hope of eternal life or the resurrection. But because Christ was raised from the dead, we also can look forward to the day when we will be ushered into the presence of God in the new Jerusalem. And there's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb there, a great celebration of all of God's people who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So, in a nutshell, I believe in creation, I believe that Christ created all things and by him all things consist and all things were made by him and for him I believe in the fall I also believe in redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ for his people I believe in the resurrection I also like I indicated believe in the decrees of God, including election and predestination. Predestination means to be predetermined before it happens what's going to happen. I believe that God is sovereign over all things. Scripture tells us that he works all things after the counsel of his own will. And also, according to Scripture, I believe that Jesus Christ is coming back in the same manner that he left. And he's going to receive all of those for whom he's died for to himself in the great marriage supper of the Lamb. And so that's the blessed hope for all those who believe in this Jesus Christ, that he is the one who paid the price for our sins we could never atone for our own sins. But Christ, through the merits of his blood, give us the hope of eternal life and also gives us a great life while we're living down here because we can live in the hope of something beyond this wicked world. So that's what my beliefs are in a nutshell. If you want any further information about this, you can certainly email me. 
Uh, you can write comments below in the section that's provided for you. Um, and we will be happy to send you any information. If you have any questions, feel free to send those questions to us. Father, we pray that you would take this brief summary of our beliefs and use it for your glory. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.